Hey everyone, Mark Johnston here with the Thriving Marriage Podcast. With me today is Kyson Kidd. Kyson, how are you doing Hello. today? Good. Thanks for having me on. Happy to be here. Yeah. So Kyson is uh, a friend of mine. He is a coach specifically focusing on pornography issues. Uh, I thought it would be a good idea, especially within this group. Um, you know, I, I feel like pornography has the ability to have a big impact on marriages. And, you know, I thought Kyson had some very interesting things to, to say on the matter. So um, what we want to talk about today is just a little bit on that the topic of pornography, how it has that impact on relationships. So if you guys want to hear a little bit about that, just stick around a moment. We'd love for you to sit and listen. So, Kyson, um, you know, I think you would be a lot better equipped here to explain what's going on and what the issue is. Why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, so um, I'm a coach. I, I, You know, it's always hard to figure out like the perfect intro to tell you all the things I love to do that I'm passionate about, but one of them is helping people get free from unwanted pornography habits. So like my, my mission isn't necessarily to like convince people that porn is right or wrong, but really for those where that's outside of their commitments or outside of their moral code or what they desire in life, I help them step into a space so that they can get free from porn and create the life that they want, create the relationships that they want. That's really interesting. And I, I like the way that you're framing this, Kyson. Um, you're saying, okay, you're not going to be like telling people, hey, this is a, something that's right or wrong. Because, I mean, I'm sure you know the statistics. There's a high amount of pornography use out there. So why really deal with this? Is this really a problem at all? What, what do you think? Yeah, I mean... You can go, there are groups that like really focus on the science of like how it can affect your sex life and how it leads to usually like more loneliness and depression. Um, you know, there, there's a lot of different pieces of that puzzle. And then there's definitely a group that's like, ah, just do what you want. Like, it's not a big deal. And honestly, for those people, I'm like, cool. If that's working for you, you do it. Um, for myself in my personal life, I, I actually had a lot of experience with pornography. Um, like 18 plus years of wanting to stop using pornography, but feeling sucked into it. And um, so you get people in that situation where like, Oh, I'm feel, I feel stuck. I don't know how to resolve it. I, you know, you got a lot of people doing it in secret, either like not sharing it with their spouse or whoever else they feel to, like they would share that with. Um, usually it's the spouse though. And it does lead to disconnect and feeling like you can't be your true self a lot of like shame and a lot of separation and loneliness. So I, I'd say the place that it's most affecting people would be in relationships and like closeness. Hmm. Um, and the question I would ask you, like if, if you're thinking like, Oh, I use porn. I'm not sure if I, if it's a problem or not, or if porn is in your marriage, whatever. Um, the real question is like, is it empowering you? Is it bringing you closer? Is it helping you actually create the life you want? Or are you using it out of like an, es an escape, you know, just the same way we would use uh, Netflix and video games and unhealthy eating to escape undesirable feelings? Are you using porn in a fearful way? Um, and is it separating you from things that you actually want? And I think that brings up a really good question there. You're saying, you know, how is it stepping or, you know, what is the the purpose of pornography in your life? And just a moment ago, we were just mentioning that there is a high amount of use. I, I don't know the exact statistic, but I want to say it's at least something like 75 percent of men, uh, a little bit lower in women might might need to be higher than that. I believe I've seen higher numbers. Why do you think there is so much usage of pornography um do you think it's greater today why you know like, I, I know i'm throwing a lot of questions at you all at once but yeah what do you think about that yeah i mean some of that question might be for might be better suited for like a researcher mm -hmm. um i am a bit of a philosopher in this area like i love focusing mostly on the individual like if you're using it and you feel like you can't let's figure let's figure out that puzzle um but I do think one of the pieces that for sure impacts that is the accessibility of pornography. Mm -hmm. um, one statistic that is pretty 
I guess like shocking is that 93% of boys will actually um, have their first experience or exposure to porn before age 18 and then 63% of girls with the average age for all people being 11. So age 11 is the average exposure. And so one of the shocking things there is like, if to kind of go extreme for a second, if an adult were to show pornography to a child, we consider it like sexual abuse and, you know, we prosecute and send it to prison or whatever, but because society can't be like targeted as an individual, um, there's sort of this weird thing where like, huh, whatever we've done as a, as a society has enabled, you know, 93% of boys, 63% of girls to view porn before age 18. And some would say that's harmless. Um, you know, you've got to explore the body and all that. But I, I think you end up with a lot of kids who don't know how to face it, especially with, as you combine that with like a lot of shame culture around sexuality and the body. And so you, you've got these kids creating really unhealthy, fearful habits with pornography before they have any idea how to deal with it. And so a lot of people carry that into their marriage and into their future family. And that's where the big impact happens. I think. I mean, we all know, of course, like the, the age where it's legal, whether it's right or not, you mm-hmm. know, it's 18. And I can only imagine if most, and you're saying the average age of exposure is 11. That means that we certainly have kids who are younger than 11 that yeah. are, are being exposed to pornography. And I can only yeah. imagine that it has some sort of impact for those who are not mature enough to, to handle it. it you know, I, I, yeah. I can't say it has to, but you know, you, you kind of have to assume to a certain degree. And I'm wondering if, as you're saying, like if just the, a little bit of this immaturity is leading to some unhealthy relationships around sex, as, as you said, how could you tell them whether it's crossed that line where it's gotten to this point where it is becoming unhealthy? Yeah. Wow. With just dropping the power question, how can you tell when it's a problem? I, again, I leave this so much to the individual. Like I trust people to be able to feel, you know, to check in with their intuition. Um, Does this empower you or does it pull you away from your, you know, responsibilities and relationships? Um, And I'd say the, the biggest, the most obvious sign is like, does this fall outside of your commitments that you've made? Um, You know, a lot of times, there's this sense of betrayal for one partner if their partner is using pornography. Um, so if, if you're in that situation where you're doing something that you don't feel comfortable being honest about, if you're hiding it, it's a pretty good sign that it's in an unhealthy space or if it falls outside of your commitments to yourself or to your relationships. So that's really a, a very much of like a, a personal evaluation that's needed in it almost sounds like you're saying if it feels wrong, then there's something <laughs> there's something wrong there. I suppose that's a good way of judging a lot of things. Um, right? Yeah, and it keeps me safe, you know. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, yeah. there are people out there trying to trying to convince everyone that it's all wrong. And my personal view is like I don't see any positivity from it. But again, I'm not here to like push that on someone. It's really like if you're if it feels like there's something off for you, then let's work on it together. So. And there's certainly um, a fair amount of people that feel the same way where they're saying, okay, there's, there's nothing really positive about this. And we do see some amount of organization out there trying to, to tackle this problem. I mean, I, I, I believe that there's things like 12 step programs, other similar things. Is there really sufficient support out there in society to, to support, to handle these issues. What do you you think there is or? Yeah, I think we're, I think it's a very under supported issue. Um, I mean, it's just out of control. How many with those numbers of like, you know, 93% and 63% of girls before 18, you know, it's their first exposure to sex. It's also like paid actors that are, you know, acting things out. It's most often like the majority of it has some type of dominance or violence aspect to it. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I, I think there could be a lot more support. I do. And maybe this segues into like my philosophy a little bit. I don't think the key to overcoming pornography as a society or on an individual level 
I don't think the key is to focus it, like obsessively on pornography itself. I see pornography um, and the issues that come from it. I see that as like a symptom of deeper issues. Um, so it, pornography is a really blatant thing. Like it, as a symptom, it's really easy to see like, this is the problem. A lot of people will just like sit and blame pornography for like all the issues in their life. And I usually like to help people flip the script a little bit and say like, maybe you're actually turning to porn because you're afraid to face these problems in your life. Um, so there's kind of an answer plus some thoughts. <laughs> This seems to be like a really big differentiating factor because, you know, I have looked at some of the support groups or other solutions out there, and it does seem to be very much focused on pornography itself being the problem, the, the, fo the focus in what you need to solve. But you're saying something else here. You're essentially, you're saying, okay, pornography is a, what, a symptom of many other issues. And yeah. Okay. Yeah, specifically an unwanted porn habit. Like if you say, I don't want this habit, but I'm still, but you're still struggling. Um, I like, I'll tell people this, like, it's kind of ironic because I talk about pornography in the beginning. So I can like call to my people, like, who are you? How can I help you? But as soon as we get into the program, it's like 95%, 95% of what I coach people on has nothing to do with porn. It has to do with, you know, healthy relationships are you feeling personally powerful or where are you feeling weak and controlled and where do you feel like a victim? And as people solve some of those issues or even begin to stop to solve some of those struggles in their life, the desire for porn usually diminishes quite a bit where they start to realize, like, I honestly, it's, I don't want to spend my time doing that. Um, especially when it's a, an unhealthy amount of time, like, you know, I'm doing this every day for two or three hours. Um, it's just, it's been so interesting to see people like that light switch turn on when I tell people like, it's not actually about porn. Porn's just the thing that's growing. You know, it's like a weed growing up from the roots and we got to work on the roots to take care of the weed. Okay. Well, tell me about that a little bit more specifically. So how are you getting people to, to, to come to this realization to, and to solve some of these other problems? How are you getting them to actually step away from this thing that I imagine has probably been plaguing them for years, if not more? Yeah, definitely. I usually start in a place of like, let's get, let's get rid of the shame and let's step into a place of love and compassion. And as people give themselves permission to love themselves, it becomes easier to start to notice what you're thinking. What are you feeling? Cause a lot of people struggling with porn, um, it's almost become like a, like a tripwire. As soon as something fearful comes up in life, this immediate feeling of like, Oh, I need to go look at porn. I'm going to go escape it. So it's almost like skipping. They're jumping over all the steps of like, I'm feeling an emotion. What's that emotion coming from? What can I learn? That's all being skipped. Um, right to like, I'm going to go escape it. And so I help people kind of step into a place of love, trusting that like they can actually experience their emotions and learn from it. And then we kind of go through that process. Like, let's figure out why you actually want porn or what part of you is terrified of your life and turning to porn to escape it. Mm -hmm. And what's so fun about that process is that, and I, I hear this pretty often. I remember one of my clients, he said, uh, this is the most fun I've had in years. And I was like, what are you talking about? And he just said, I'm loving asking questions about myself that I've never asked before. You know, like learning about yourself, he was stepping into a more powerful, balanced relationship with his wife instead of playing like power struggle games. Mm -hmm. And so as he did those things, like, especially with, with this particular client is like, we don't need to talk about porn all day. We need to talk about relationships and about self-love and the things you know, the things like going on in here, it's a little bit like metaphysical to talk about, but like the stuff in your heart, let's talk about it. That that's really interesting. It, it sounds like there's a lot of introspection involved in that. And mm -hmm. I think I, I would say that I I've noticed that there's not a whole lot of focus on introspection. I don't know about elsewhere in the world, but certainly in our society. Um, I, honestly, I think that a lot of people, 
even even if pornography isn't isn't the issue specifically, a lot of people could probably get a lot of use out of just a little bit more introspection in their life and talking a little bit more about what's going on in the heart. Mm, totally. So if people are interested in being able to step away from some of the, the shame and trying to actually get at some of these real issues here, how do they get in contact with you? How do they actually you know, start the, this process? Yeah. So all my social media tags are just at Kyson kid. So K Y S O N K I D D. Um, so you can find me on Facebook and Instagram. I like when people just send me a message. If you want, you can email me or go to my website. Uh, the website is kysonkid.com. And maybe there's an easy way to put, I can put a link in the comments or whatever, yeah. but kysonkid.com slash resolve temptation. So I have a free mini course on how to start navigating when you feel the urge. I always say like temptation, you know, whatever that feeling is of like, Oh, I want to go into an unhealthy habit, like pornography. Um, I've got that mini course there to help you kind of get started to experience some of my philosophy. And then uh, I actually offer a free 30 minute coaching session to anybody in the world. I'll keep saying that until my schedule gets ridiculously filled, but, um, my goal is to just serve anyone that wants to make a breakthrough and to start to make some momentum in that area. Well, I'll tell everyone here that that's listening. I've actually been very impressed with Kyson. It's it's enough so that, you know, I wanted Kyson here today to to talk about what's going on. You know, I've looked at a lot of uh, what he's doing and I'm just want to say I'm, I'm very impressed enough so that, I, you know, like, uh, that Kyson and I, we, we're actually talking about having some amount of collaboration. Now, like the focus, of course, is on, you know, if people are coming to you, they're coming to you specifically about the pornography. But yeah, I, I wanted to just say to everyone there, like, I, I'm impressed enough with this that I, I'm stepping into to support a little bit of like what Kyson is doing, just because I do think it's a, it's a big, uh, important sort of topic that isn't really getting talked about in a lot of places. Um, yeah. you know, even just before this this meeting, guys, I'm like, we were just discussing how, you know, everyone kind of was aware that pornography was out there uh, as kids. Like you and I both kind of briefly mentioned there's been some some amount of involvement with, with pornography in the past. And yet there is also like no one wants to talk about it directly there's all this shame and this guilt because it's, it's something that you're not supposed to be involved with i don't know about like other other people or other family dynamics other other cultures but it you know i've talked with enough people that have had very similar experiences to this like what you were describing what you know what what we were talking about earlier so i'm really excited to see how this plays out and how this develops guys in any totally. last thoughts uh words of wisdom anything and all you wanted to, to share here oh i love that. when i hear that question i was like there's got to be something so deeply beautiful to share <laughs> um i, you know, I love I what you're you on the spot there a bit of, <laughs> <laughs> can you give us some deep words of wisdom and you, know, can you like, changed yeah. our lives <laughs> yeah um i mean i love what you're saying I, I think porn can play a huge role in a lot of marriages not thriving at their ideal level right and, um, it's just, again, I'll like, I guess I'll, I'll put this positive, like energy out about it, that pornography, if, if for you and your spouse or you or someone, you know, it feels like pornography is this huge, terrifying monster. Um, you know, this plague of the earth that can't be fixed. I would just suggest there is a totally different way to approach it that pornography, just like any other journey, whether it's, you know, st I struggle with anger, I'm struggling with being connected to people or with finances, whatever it is. Um, I believe the journey of porn and overcoming it or getting free can be so enjoyable, like starting today, if you want it to be, uh, it can be a very meaningful journey. You can have joy in your life. You don't have to wait till you're at six months free, you know, six months without porn. You can honestly start to enjoy the journey right now. And um, I, I love supporting people in that journey. So awesome. Great. There you go. Well, once again, if you're, if this is at all interesting to you, uh, please reach out to Kais. And I, I don't want to speak for you, but I imagine that you'll probably be, probably be looking at some of the comments here. Um, mm -hmm. 
you mentioned that you put your the link in for your website. So let us know, like, let us know if you would like some support in this or just let us know your thoughts on pornography, its impact and how it's impacted you or whatever. Just let us know. All right. Totally. Thanks for your time, Kaisen. Um, yeah, thank you. Thank you all for listening. Thanks for listening to The Thriving Marriage, your A to Z blueprint for not just surviving marriage, but thriving. Until next time, my friends, thrive on.